Here's a little more complex situation where we don't have the luxury of having h, the elevation, line up with some of the important boundaries of our, uh, our static situation. So this is water and we're under a free surface here. So that's a place that makes sense to define as our datum point because we know that it's at atmospheric pressure or zero gauge. So that's going to make our lives a little easier. If this more solid section here was a trap door and we were trying to figure out the forces on that trap door and we had to integrate the pressure over this surface, then it would be a lot easier if we could define our coordinate system relative to this surface. So let's make our x-axis run right along the surface like that. And since this is the start of the trap door, and that's the end of the trap door, it might be convenient to make that x equal to zero, and this x equal to whatever the larger value is. In this case, let's say it's five meters. So that would make our y direction perpendicular to x, and our z direction goes in and out of the page. So if z is horizontal, and if y is fixed equal to zero on the surface that we're interested in, then we really only need to find out the function for pressure as a function of x location on this surface. So on this surface, this one right here, the elevation is a function of x only, therefore pressure will be a function of x only as well. So how are we going to get there? Well, let's take some observations. P is equal to P naught plus 4.3 times rho g at the location x equal to zero. And P is equal to P naught plus 4.3 plus 3.1 the total elevation change down to there times rho g at x equal to 5. And we know that we're going to have a linear variation in pressure because as we follow along in x, we're getting deeper and deeper with a straight line surface. So we've got a linear relationship there. So we should be able to say that uh, we, can, we can figure out the pressure. It's still going to be p naught it's definitely going to be plus 4.3 rho g just to get us down to x equals zero and then it's going to increase by 3.1 over 5 times x times rho g 3.1 is the elevation change that we get x divided by 5 gives us the fraction of the distance that we progressed along from zero down to 3.1 so that'll give us a relationship for pressure as a function of x. Or we could approach this from a different direction. We could say that h, well, what is h? h is negative 4.3 by the time we get there. And it's getting deeper and deeper still. And so it'll be 3.1 by the time we get to 5. So when x is equal to 5, we go another 3.1 deeper. p equal to p naught minus rho g h. So p is equal to p naught plus 4.3 rho g plus 3.15 x times rho g. Either one of those, they give you the same answer. And let's check it and make sure that it works out. When x is equal to 0, p naught plus 4.3 rho g checks at that point. When x is equal to 5, 5 and 5 cancel out. 4.3 plus 3.1 times rho g. So that one checks. And the relationship is linear because the surface is flat. So that works. Let's try one a little more complicated now. Suppose I had a system that looked something like this with a round surface. And I wanted to figure out what the pressure was 
anywhere on that round surface because it's acting in over the surface like that and I'd like to find out the the net results for forces and moments. Well I can pick my coordinate system to make it as easy as possible to solve the problem. So once again there's P naught up at the surface and this distance down below that's some value L so we're that far under the water before we even get to this arc and if I took my origin in the center of that circular surface that might make my geometry a little easier doesn't change the physics when we choose our coordinate system to make life easier so if that's x and y I could also think of things in terms of r and theta and that might make my life a little easier now if that's r and that's theta then the y coordinate here is equal to r the radius of the circle circular section times the sine of theta as we progress around that circle so pressure will depend on how far under the water we are it'll be p naught plus the distance we are under the water and the distance will be under the water will be l to get down to here another r to get down to y equals zero minus whatever increase in y we've got as we've wrapped around there in the theta direction minus r sine theta times rho g so now we've got p as a function of theta alone because we chose our coordinate system wisely and only on the arc because that was where we developed this relationship here between y and theta so as a result we've now got our pressure as a function of theta and we can integrate over this entire surface so once again we've used analytical geometry we've chosen our coordinate system carefully to make our lives a little easier and we've got a relationship between pressure and variables that we can use in our integration so first thing that's important be able to find out the pressure at a particular point next thing that's important be able to figure out how the pressure varies as you are moving over a defined region in space so the pressure here is increasing as we go down along that gate if we were also interested in a gate over here we would probably want to do a different integral we might choose to use a different coordinate system if that made our life a little easier so practice this skill make sure you can do the geometry to be able to get these functions of space from our knowledge that the pressure increases and the further we go below the surface of the water.